All right, so I am here at the Humid Climate Conference. I'm sure a lot of you didn't even know that was a thing, but I'm, <laughs> but I'm here with Matt Reisinger. It turns out a lot of you already know Matt. Um, I caught up with him, and he was kind enough to, to come on and shoot this quick video. So um, Matt is a contractor here in Austin, Texas. Yep. Um, we're, you know, humid climate conference, obviously Austin is a fairly humid climate, not as humid as where I come from in, in central Florida or even worse on the coast. But what I was interested in with Matt is that he does some pretty innovative things, some things that I think a lot of us aren't used to contractors doing. Yeah. So tell me, you know, you install dehumidification. That's something that you do. Tell me about how you got into doing that. Why, why did that start happening? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good question, Brian. You know, when I started building here in this humid climate 12 years ago, I went to all the building science conferences and heard if you right size your equipment, you're good. You know, just don't oversize your equipment. Make sure it's perfectly right. sized. Pay someone to size it. You know, do a good manual J. You should be good to go. Right. And then I started having some higher humidity issues in houses. So at the same time, I started learning about VRF technology, you know, variable refrigerant flow. And the guys that I was hearing from at conferences, oh, yeah, this will totally control humidity. It'll run to these really low stages. You know, compared to your single speed, these VRFs, man, they're incredible. They'll run down to 15%. I thought, this is totally going to handle it. Right. Boom, now my compressor is going to run all the time. I'm going to be totally dehumidifying all day long, all in one box. I don't have to have anything separate. And so I remember my very first house I put VRF in. The client was a super geek. Uh, it could have been an HVAC tech, frankly. <laughs> and uh, he's like, Matt, you know, we've been in here six months, and I'm just having a hard time keeping the humidity low. I don't want to be super cold in my house. I want to keep the thermostat at 72. You know, what do we do? So we tweaked the system. It was a Mitsubishi. We put all the, all the controls on it. And no disrespect to Mitsubishi. I still use their equipment all the time. Yeah, I love them. Yeah. But I don't think that their bill of goods on these will totally control humidity and this dry mode that right. they have on there is really totally accurate. Right. Yeah. Well, this is exactly what we've, we've talked a little bit about this on the podcast. But when you start to think about sensible heat ratios and you start to actually look at those ratings, mm -hmm. you begin to realize that some equipment matches just aren't going to cut it. And even when you match the equipment perfectly, you have this balance, this dance that you've got to do between sensible and latent. Yep. And so... You obviously started using dehumidification regularly. How do you have that conversation? Because I think a lot of a lot of technicians, a lot of contractors out there are like, you know, customers are not going to spend the money on these secondary devices yeah. in order yeah. to control latent independently. All right, so good question, Brian. So let's say you're a tech, you're out in the field, and you're you're seeing a busted 15, 20 year old system that you know they need a brand new system. You're going to give them a, a price, seven, eight, ten grand, whatever it is, to replace their system out. This is the time to have the comfort talk. Hey, how comfortable have you been in the house? Uh, and a question that I love is my, my Texas wife, when I first met her, whenever we went out on a date, she'd take a sweater with her. Whether it was you know March, April, May, or July, she brought a sweater because she knew she was going to be cold and uncomfortable. And why do we do that? Because we turn our thermostats down to get comfortable. And oftentimes, there's a big disconnect between the husband and wife on how to get comfortable. And in fact, I had that too in my marriage when we first got married. Um, but what I did was I plugged a standalone dehum in and realized that if I controlled the humidity separately from the thermostat, I didn't have to keep it at 68 to be comfortable, which I wanted. And my wife was freezing at that temp. So, you know, it's almost, frankly, a little bit of uh, uh, marriage counseling questions <laughs> to Based say, how, yeah, how's your marriage? <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, maybe this would be a big key for you, Mr. Client. And if you're already going to spend, you know, 8000 bucks on a new system, what's another 2500 bucks or $3,000 for a standalone dehum like this or maybe a small one like this uh, or even a really small ducted one like the 70H? In fact, that's the model I have in my house right there. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think the encouragement to technicians out there is, Guys like Matt exist. They're out there. There are people who are waking up to the fact that controlling your humidity independent of the equipment in high humid environments, which is you know, the entire Gulf Coast, the entire eastern seaboard, even places like Ohio, yeah. really struggle with independent humidity control. Yeah. And if you really want to solve these problems where your customers are very comfortable, and not only we didn't talk about this, but also uh, the health aspects yeah, of it. You sure. know, when you have your humidity controlled, oh, I got something on that too. You're really, oh, well, give it to me. Yeah, one other quick thing on that, on that point, Brian, you know, is, uh, as I've over the years I've started doing some more expensive houses. I've got a lot of clients now that I build that are second homes. Mm -hmm. And if you have a second home in Florida or Texas, you don't want to spend a billion dollars on cooling your house that you're not living in. 
So I tell them one big benefit of a stainless and dehum is I can keep your humidity at 45% and your temperature at 90. As long as your candles don't melt, it doesn't matter. And then your house smells fresh and clean. And we can keep it below that threshold of 60% humidity without using the air conditioner. So now I can save money while you're gone. I can make sure the house is not having mold problems. It's not smelly or musty when you get home after being gone for two months to your uh, to your main house. So this is another way that you can sell clients on a retrofit is the health reasons, the indoor air quality. Everything activates above 60% humidity and you start getting to you know, 80% humidity. We just heard in this conference, that's where mold happens and can uh, mold spores on the surface can get activated just by that humidity in the air activating them. So the humidity control is a big part of health in our houses. Yep. Well, hey, I appreciate it, Matt. Uh, how, if people want to find out more about you, you've got your YouTube channel. How do they How do they find that? How do they learn more about what you're doing? Um, so it's just YouTube backslash Matt Reisinger. Uh, the other thing that we do all the time is run Instagram at least twice a day, posting pictures from job sites and talking about geeky building science. I get into HVAC a lot, but not totally. So if you're a building nerd, follow me at uh, Reisinger Build is my Instagram uh, tag. And then I've got a blog at MattReisinger.com. Yeah, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal channel. I've I've watched the videos; they're really great. It's you know, it's like most things. We all have busy lives, and it's like oh, it's another YouTube channel. I want to get time. But I was going through it last night, watching the videos. I'm like, crap! You know, how many things have I screwed up? You guys know, I built uh, I built my own house two years ago, and I'm like, ah, oh, crap! I'm gonna have to rip the walls off now. So uh, anyway, thank you, Matt. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate you having me. I'll see y'all later. Yeah, see ya.